Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is Elon Musk making an announcement about SpaceX. And today we're going to briefly discuss this kind of important announcement and his plans for his company, and we're going to try to recreate his mission in Kerbal Space Program. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So, Mr. Elon Musk uh, was actually earlier talking at the International Astronomical Congress in Adelaide, Australia, and he uh, basically talked for about 43 minutes uh, talking about the plans for Mars, his uh, current progress with uh, their new rocket known as BFR, which uh, <clears throat> stands for a big <clears throat> rocket. And uh, he kind of uh, gave us a lot of hope for his company. They plan 30 launches next year. But uh, then he started talking about some crazy things that people didn't really expect, and those things are actually mind-blowing. And I'm going to kind of um, let you guys watch this yourself in your free time, because we're not going to be talking about the Martian exploration just yet, although I kind of want to recreate this as well at some point. But we're going to actually talk about this right here. He's, no, not this. He starts talking about this crazy plan. And the plan is this. The plan is to actually use those mega big, super big rockets called BFR to launch them right here on Earth and land right here on Earth and use them as a kind of a um, super fast transportation. Now, when you think about it, wh why didn't anyone think of that before? You know, we have ICBMs, which are intercontinental ballistic missiles, which are meant to deliver nuclear payload pay payload in like under half an hour anywhere on Earth. Why couldn't we use the same technology to deliver people? Now, this is essentially what his company is now trying to kind of uh, tackle. Now, they have the technology and they obviously have the know-how and uh, possibly even support from quite a lot of uh, communities, but there's obvious problems here. One of them, of course, is that this could potentially trigger the Third World War because this could be misidentified as rockets being fired by... Uh, some crazy state like North Korea, which has been th threatening the world with their crazy nuclear weapons very recently. But uh, let's not talk about this just yet. Look at how fast this would be. Hong Kong to Singapore, Los Angeles to Toronto, 24 minutes. The longest travel would be like half an hour. Now let's actually recreate this in Kerbal Space into the KSP uh, Space Vehicle Design Center and basically build a kind of a copy of the BFR. Now, this is totally not what BFR looks like. As a matter of fact, this uh, is probably the worst possible replica you can think of, but it does have kind of similar components. So there's two stages here. This, no, sorry, not this. This is the last stage that's going to be landing uh, somewhere on Kerbin. And this is the first stage that's going to propel it into the upper atmosphere and into space and then basically try to return, although in this particular simulation, we're not going to be making it return. Now, very, very simple. There is really nothing else here, just these two stages. And let's see if we can actually land it somewhere. We're going to maybe add another crew member, Valentina Kerman is going to come with us and let's save this and go, let's go. And let's begin with the launch of this beautiful rocket. Um, we're going to just kind of ascend very slowly and I'm going to skip through most of this part until we're in the upper atmosphere. But the idea here is that essentially this rocket is going to be launched just like a re any other regular rocket is going to do the gravity turn. It's going to assume a hyperbolic or parabolic trajectory or basically elliptical trajectory so that it can then um, land somewhere on the surface of Kerbin. Now we're going to aim for land hopefully and not, uh, not water, but we're going to ascend very slowly because this rocket is going to start wobbling really soon. I didn't design it very well. As a matter of fact, I put very, very little thought into designing this rocket, and so it's not very stable. And this is actually one of the first points I wanted to make. Uh, controlling rockets or flying rockets is a lot more challenging than flying airplane. As a matter of fact, as you can see right now, uh, there comes my first spin. If this ever happens in an airplane, everybody basically dies. If, if this ever happens in a rocket, uh, I'm pretty sure everybody dies as well. Anyway, so let me actually, uh, let me get out of the spin Kerbal style and let's proceed with our mission. No, I can do it. I can totally get rid of the spin. And as a matter of fact, you saw nothing, nothing wrong happened. We're flying normally. There was no spin whatsoever. 
But anyway, that's kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of the point here. Flying rockets is more challenging. It's more demanding. It definitely requires some crazy piloting skills. And most importantly, um, you know, getting a pilot license is pretty easy, but training a NASA astronaut that can fly rockets is essentially very, very expensive and very, very, very difficult. So these rockets would have to rely entirely on autopilot, meaning that there is a bit of a safety concern there. But anyway, so we're going to uh, try to launch ourselves into a kind of a parabolic uh, trajectory. We're going to run out of fuel right now, and we're going to release the last stage. Ultimately, in an actual SpaceX mission, this would now be returning back to uh, Earth. But uh, this craft right here is what's going to be landing on, uh, on the planet, on Carbon, somewhere in the location with other people in it. So basically, in the, in the video simulation, you saw it was landing, I believe it was, it was Shanghai or something. It was New York to Shanghai. And so we're going to be simulating this, but let's actually see where we're going on the map here and where we're going to be landing. So we're not actually going that far. We're going just right here in this, this uh, land region there. So it's perfect to test our landing apparatus, but you already see how many problems there are. But obviously the SpaceX rockets don't spin as much because they've been designed and redesigned so many times, but they have had a few explosions. As a matter of fact, very recently, one of the space rock, uh, SpaceX rockets exploded with a satellite from Facebook on it. And so there was a bit of a... A, a feud between SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk, and uh, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. But anyway, let's uh, let's just uh, run through this a little bit faster and get to the point where we're actually going to be uh, trying to land back on Kerbin. And basically, we're trying to simulate the actual uh, landing of a SpaceX rocket as it uh, tries to re-enter the atmosphere and as it tries to land back um, in a kind of a vertical position. So this is the part that SpaceX was able to perfect pretty well. They've had, um, I believe, 16 consecutive landings already. Um, but nevertheless, when people are involved, the stakes are slightly higher. So, okay, so how would this work in theory? So right now it would actually uh, turn away from its velocity vector, assuming a retrograde position. It will then engage its final engine and start slowing down quite dramatically. It would uh, spend most of its fuel actually slowing down and reducing its uh, um, re-entry speed. Because right now, this is when things will get super, super hot and super dangerous. And as a matter of fact, um, this is probably one of the more dangerous parts of the journey. And since at uh, this point you can't really do anything, even if something goes wrong, you can't really do anything. You just have to re-enter the atmosphere. This is where things could potentially go wrong. And also, this is where you would be experiencing, uh, you'd be experiencing some crazy Gs here, crazy uh, forces from the, from basically the re-entry into the very very dense atmosphere of Earth. All right, so let's just uh, watch this happen in maybe slightly faster time. And then we're going to also use some of our braking uh, apparatuses here that we have on our craft to try to slow down just a little bit more before we attempt our landing at Kerbin. Now, this is totally manual. I don't have any um, assisting AI that uh, SpaceX has on their rockets. I don't have any ways of trying to land non-manually. I'm going to have to try to ace this first time. But essentially, think of this as, what if accidentally, for some reason, the AI uh, of SpaceX uh, malfunctioned? And so basically, imagine uh, we had a sudden problem with our artificial intelligence that can't land the rocket anymore. And so we have to do it manually. And as you can see, we're actually landing in some sort of a city here. Uh, and so we actually are going to be performing a manual landing now. I don't know how well I'm going to do here. I need to start slowing down my speed and I'm going to have to start watching where I'm going as well. So let's try to do this very safely. Uh, Scott Manley style. I'm sure he would have done a much better job than me, including uh, taking off the rocket and possibly even designing it. Okay, we're going a little bit too fast here. Time to slow down to below 50 meters per second. And watch my shadow. There's a shadow right there. That sort of give me, gives me guidance on where I'm landing. All right, so far so good. And uh, we can maybe start slowly descending 
closer and closer to to Kerbin. And here we go. All right. Okay. Oh, so close. No, 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 no. Stop doing that. Oh, okay. That is not what I wanted to do. That is almost not exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, I need to retreat back into no 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 I'm gonna call this a successful landing because everybody's alive. I was so close and as you can see the reason why it failed was because I forgot to disable the retrograde uh maneuvering. But see it still moves, so it's still good. Still alive. Everyone's still safe. Everyone delivered in one piece. But anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to demonstrate. I wanted to demonstrate what Elon Musk is planning to do. We don't really know if he's going to be successful. And we don't really know if his mission is going to work at all. But uh, the fact that he's actually come up with the idea of launching rockets uh, from one city to another and delivering people in like half an hour from one place to another is pretty impressive. So... He definitely has the technology and the know-how, he definitely has the will to do it, but it's all about accepting the fact that maybe some countries will not be okay with it, especially countries like Russia that might be watching the skies 24-7, hoping that nobody launches uh, a nuclear weapon at them, and obviously US as well. So anyway, we're gonna talk more about this in future videos, and thank you so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and check out uh, Elon Musk's announcement that I posted in the description below. And I'm going to call this a Kerbal success. Very successful landing back on Kerbin. Thank you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.